This is Steve from Fifth Element Machine. I'm here to demonstrate our TL2 lathe tool post. You can see we've got our tool post mounted on this fixture that we made. This is an example of turning large diameter, large length parts on a tool room lathe. With this machine, you want to be able to keep the tailstock retracted as much as possible to keep it rigid. And you can see with the bed slots the way they are. I'd have to move back another four inches and have the quill sticking out. And as of right now, I'm not able to get the tool to the face of the part. What our fixture allows you to do is to simply loosen two Jergens ball locks, slide it over. Put our ball locks back in. Tighten them up. You know, I have to park these things 35 inch pounds. It's not very tight, a lot of holding power. And then we simply adjust our offset. Four and three quarters of an inch, because that's how the fixture is designed. So now, our part has shoulders in it, so that allows us to bias our tool to the right side, turn halfway down to wherever our shoulder is going to be, keep the tailstock retracted as much as possible, and then when we get to that part in our operation, then we do the same thing. We simply move it back just for offset four and three quarters of an inch and then we continue on the rest of the part up to the chuck. It's a nice tool to be able to do some of these bigger parts that you couldn't do on a lathe of this size but we're able to do it. And the accuracy is, is excellent and the tool clearance is excellent compared to the standard Haas riser that came with the machine. Um, before we made this and had it for sale, you used to have to unbolt that riser, move it over to the right side, bolt it in, and then if you had five or six tools, you have to reset all of those offsets. Now, you can simply just slide everything over, adjust your G54, and make money. Here you can see we're roughing our pin. The material is 4340 quench and tempered, it's about 28 to 30 Rockwell. We're taking a 50 thou depth of cut and we're feeding 12 thou per rev. You can hear it sounds nice, nice and quiet. We don't have any chatter. We've got the tailstock contracted as much as possible. We've got room to work on our part. Basically, once we get this all roughed down to that shoulder, then we'll move the tool post over and we'll finish towards the chuck. The reason why we can't just do it in one shot on these tool room lays, the apron is very wide. And that would make you have to have the tailstock sticking way out in order to get over top of it. And if you do that on a part like this, you won't even be able to turn it because it'll just deflect and move around. That's why we have that. We'll get back here in a minute to get to the next stop. All right. Got our pin rough to our first shoulder. Now, uh, part of the issue with these machines is the apron is so wide. That's what makes it necessary to move the tool post side to side. If we didn't have this set up, we've got five tools set up. We have to manually move the factory riser. Again, reiterating how much time that's wasting. In this situation, we're able to easily move all of our tools by moving the fixture and adjusting our global offset. Well, this was the other riser. You can see we can only get about that far on our part before we start running into jaws. And if the jaws will clear the apron, we could do that. 
but I'd rather just move it and be safe. Obviously, if the diameter was a half inch bigger, we wouldn't even get that far. So again, to move our full post, I already cracked them loose. We're making a movie here. Just loosen the screws a little bit. Pull out your ball locks. Slide the full post down. Ball locks in. That's it. So we've just moved all of our tools down four and three quarters of an inch, which is the design displacement of our tool post. Now we can get all the way down here. The tool is out past the apron, and we can get all the way right up to the jaws. We still have our tailstock sucked back. And again, this part's 4340, punched and tempered. It's about 30 Rockwell. And we're able to just go at it, cut it. Okay, so here is our completed shaft. Part finished um, about five inches diameter on the flange there. Part's 22 inches long. You can see it has several different diameters on it. The center, center journal is uh, seven ten thousandths of an inch total tolerance. We were able to do it on a TL2, utilizing the fifth element machine tool post fixture. Just to recap, the advantage of this is obviously being able to do such a large part. If you're looking at Haas machines, you probably need an ST40 to do a part of this length and size in one shot. Uh, TL2 is about a fifth the cost of that machine. And this is a medium sized part for us. We've done a lot bigger parts than this. But it wouldn't be possible having that tailstock sticking out across the apron. So as you can see, we have it retract it back and as long as our part has a shoulder in it we can simply move our tool post to the right side favoring the right side towards the tailstock or to the left side the way it is now towards the chuck and we have the ability to go back and forth mid program and then simply adjusting our G54 we move all of our tools that are set up this machine doesn't have a tool uh, probe, so if you didn't have that, which is the way we used to do it, you'd have to unbolt to the factory riser, move it over, and then reset all of your tools, Z offsets and diameter offsets. It would be pretty hard to do in a situation like this where you've got a part captured between centers. And if you don't have stock to scrub your tools in then you're in trouble so it's a nice way to process a large diameter shaft that you'd have to have a bigger machine to do thanks for looking check out our website for availability and we appreciate your business thank you